Howdy folks. The old older pole. Sporting a lockdown haircut. I got uh, sick of waiting for the barber shops to reopen. But it's going to be a pretty quick video, this I should think. Um, cheers, by the way. I'm drinking a little Erdinger Dunkel. And I'm smoking in a, a new to me uh, billiard. That, I'm, that I've just refurbed um, by, if you can read that, that's Imperial. Imperial Old Briere. Um, decided I didn't have enough billiards. And I'm really liking the shape right now, so I thought I'd, uh, oh, well, I got this one on eBay very cheap because it was um, pretty grotty. The stem was really... Um, really yellow and manky and there was an awful lot of cake on the inside um, but I've um, given it a clean up polish and everything else and it's come out pretty nice seems to be smoking very well as well this is the inaugural smoke for me um, and I've got some Germain's medium flake which is a tobacco that I haven't had for a few years. Um, but Really, really good tobacco. I was watching Tom uh, the other day, Token Tommy, um, and he mentioned it was uh, by far one of his favorite tobaccos of last year, I think, or the year before. I can't remember which video I was watching, but it made me, it reminded me that I hadn't had any for a few years and I did find, much like everything that Germains make, um, it to be a pretty spectacular tobacco. So I'm uh, reacquainting myself with it. But uh, yeah, so I got tagged in um, Timber Drifter's latest video. Um, where the question was asked about your first pipe and tobacco. Well, there's, um, it's a difficult one to answer that, because to be honest, there's been three times in my life that I've picked up a pipe, um, with the last time being, well, being as I am today after numerous years of actually smoking full time. But the first time I picked up a pipe, um, I guess I was probably, probably 13 years old, something like that. And back in them days, um, you could wander into an old antique shop, um, of which uh, there were many where I lived and uh, they, they'd have old estate pipes in a jar or in a basket on the counter. And it didn't matter how old you were, you could buy one. Um, but being too young to get tobacco, looking too young to get tobacco, um, the first thing I smoked in it was tea. So consequently, that habit didn't last very long. Now, second time I picked up a pipe uh, was, I guess I was about 21 years old, 21, 22 years old, something like that. So in the, in the mid, mid 90s, mid to late 90s. And 
I mean, I don't have the original pipe now, but it was one of these. Um, trusty, faithful Missouri Mission corn cob. And uh, you can't go wrong. Can't go wrong with a corn cob. A couple of quid. And uh, yeah. And the tobacco that I picked. Mm. Well, of course, this was back in the days before YouTube, so, um, and not having had anybody in my life who smoked a pipe and could teach me what to buy and how to prepare it and so on, I had wandered into one of the tobacconists where I was living at the time in Derby. Um, and I asked for a recommendation from the chap behind the counter, but, um, well, I mean, he didn't really have much of a point of reference. So I, I went with some kind of aromatic. And uh, I didn't know how to load it, didn't know anything about cadence. Um, didn't know how to smoke a pipe. So uh, that time around, well, didn't really last too long for me either. And I think the uh, pipe got consigned to the dustbin and I just went straight back on the cigarettes. But third time lucky. And, um, well, that would have been after I discovered YouTube um, and after I discovered that there were sad people like myself <laughs> presenting videos on YouTube um, all about smoking pipes. And, and um, oh, what happened? Well, My girlfriend at the time had convinced me to buy one. So I happened to be lucky enough to have lived in Exeter at the time where there was a good tobacconist, um, one of the last, um, a gaze, um, down on the high street. And uh, what I bought in there was this pipe here. And this is a Wessex special. Uh, now, I can't tell you much about this pipe other than it's crap. It's really thin, really thin walls. Um, it gets really hot. This stain or, um, well, everything about it is just cheap and nasty. You know, the briar is just not, it's not a good quality briar. I mean, it's got loads of fills in it. I'm not sure you, yeah, there's a pretty big one there. Um, and there, it's got loads of fills, the stain, or well, everything just sort of, it's almost like a varnish and it just chips off. Um, and as I say, there's something about the, the pipe itself that just feels really cheap. Although, Magase, <laughs> Um, especially when they were, um, when they were, when they actually had a shop, he's, he's gone entirely online now, um, was just extortionately expensive. I do remember going in there once and buying a corn cob and I paid £8.50 for one of these, which are three quid anywhere else you would buy them. Um, so, uh, yeah. I didn't really go in there very often um, to, to buy things if I could help it. Uh, I, I like to support local businesses, so I'd go in there and I'd get tobacco from time to time. But um, this, this pipe really, I think I probably paid something like 50 quid for it, um, which, yeah, it, it's not worth 50. It's not a 50 pound pipe. Just no way is it worth 50 quid. So a bit of a rip off. Um, anyway, 
that was the first briar pipe that I owned uh, that didn't come from an antique shop when I was 13 years old and which hasn't been used to smoke tea. Um, now at the time, as far as tobacco goes, I was getting my influence from YouTube and I come to the conclusion, I think, uh, from my second time around, that aromatics probably were not going to be my thing. Um, so one of the tobaccos that um, people were talking a lot about on the videos that I was watching was Dunhill's My Mixture 965. So I got myself some of that. And I got some early morning pipe and some... Elizabethan mixture uh, and I gave all of those a go um, and so that was the journey that was the beginning of the journey and interestingly enough I don't actually rate those tobaccos anymore not that they're in production anymore of course but I didn't really rate them after a while I think they were a little bit hyped probably because of the name as much as anything and in fairness Jermaine's for example Gareth and Hogarth in my opinion at least do far far superior quality tobaccos than Dunhill ever did but Yeah, as I look back through some of the first videos that I ever did on YouTube, which uh, I've taken off now, but I still have on on my uh, my uploads. At that time, I think I was smoking a lot of early morning pipe. But as most of you know me all know, I've moved away from those. Uh, sort of oriental forward or Latakia forward blends now. What you'd call in English, I guess. Uh, my thing uh, for many years has been burly forward blends or Virginia burlies. Um, so favourites of mine being Jermaine's Rich Dark, Rich Dark Flake. Um, and uh, well since uh, the last few years at least having discovered a love of Lakeland's Coniston Cut Plug being an absolute favourite so yeah there you go um, thanks Timber Drifter for the uh, for the nomination um, Interesting, interesting video actually. Interesting question. Because everybody's different. And it's something I was talking about with on uh, one of the Zoom meetings that I've been having recently, either with uh, folks there in the States or um, Pipe Club of London. just reaching the end of that bowl now. Um, if somebody wants to give me a bit of history, a bit of a history lesson, I wouldn't mind knowing if uh, if someone can age that pipe for me. I've got a suspicion it's from the 1930s, but I may be wrong. Obviously Imperial is the brand and that was um, Imperial Tobaccos, um, who were owners of most of the tobacco factories, I guess. Excuse me. So these would have been made by somebody for them, I guess. But this one has, uh, where's the camera? There it is. This one has Imperial Old Briere, made in England. And uh, it's also stamped Imperial on the uh, stem. And on the other side, I've got the number 072. You can see that. Yeah, there you go. Um, obviously the shape. So, uh, hmm. if any of you folks know anything about the brand, Im uh, Imperial brand, 
um, of pipes, then uh, do drop us a message, let me know, because I'd be quite fascinated. This one was obviously very much loved by somebody, um, because the amount of cake that I had to clear out of it was just phenomenal. It was, And it was like iron in there, it really was. Um, so it was somebody's very well loved and uh, very well used pipe. Yeah, but a really nice one. I'm really quite pleased with that. Anyway, that's it, folks. Uh, you guys take it easy. I will. Uh, I will catch you again soon. And uh, thanks again for the nomination, um, Tim Drifter. All right, take it easy. <laughs>